Well, I'm waiting. Okay, I'll tell you what's going on, but it's going to sound absolutely mad. Fine. Explain it all to me, then. This should be good. And I thought it was a hallucination until- Marlene, I'm saying this from a place of concern. Do you understand the sheer insanity of what you've just told me? I know, it, it sounds like I could barely believe it myself, but you have- No, what you have to do is take responsibility for yourself now that he's gone, Marlene. Imagine if someone from town heard any of the things you just said. They'd have you shipped off to the asylum, and I'd never be able to see you again. Or even worse, what if they believed you? What if they thought you were off making deals with supernatural creatures to resurrect your brother? Committing necromancy? You could be hanged for what you're doing. Think about what the Witchfinder would do to you. It, it, it's not like that. I'm not crazy or, or doing witchcraft. I'm just... I know what it is, Marlene. I know you're not doing anything and that you're just making up stories where there's a way to bring your brother back. But Finn is dead. And I won't lose my daughter as well to some simple-minded fantasy. I won't let you partake in this madness any further, and nor will you breathe a word of this to any other soul. I know how to distract you from these delusions. Wait, what are you doing? You can't touch us things. We can't move them. I understand he's gone, but that still doesn't mean you can do this. Please! His school books? I don't understand. What am I meant to do with these? You're going to be selling them. This isn't a punishment, Marlene, no matter how you see it. You'll sell his books because he has no need for them anymore, and when you let that part of him go, you will feel better for it. Obsessing over him and everything he owns is not good for anyone. Not Finn, and especially not you. Finally, some help. I understand the excitement of the day, but if you think I'll excuse your clumsiness, when you fail to keep your eyes open, you're sorely mistaken. Wait, Marlene? Schoolmaster, uh, I'm sorry. Be more attentive, Marlene. Finn would never have done something so rude. And on auction day, too. Auction day? Yes, auction day. Hence the setup. Well, hence the setup. If those good for nothing cretins actually showed up, never trust your students for manual labor. Finn made this. I didn't take someone of your disposition as an art critic, but you are correct that it is Finn's. A collaboration of sorts. Our facilities and art supplies, his talent. We are, of course, reluctant to part with the belongings of the talent. But a famine is not the time for sentimentality. The school needs the money. I don't suppose you'd be willing to give this to our family as a parting gift to Finn? He made this. I can't let some stranger own it. As I said, the work was a collaboration. Your brother may have had some claim to the work, but our school can rightfully claim as much ownership. We do not run a charity here, we run a school. And if you're done looking around, it's time for me to return to work. Oh, uh, what about a trade? I don't have any money, but I have things I can give you in exchange, things you can auction off instead. Uh, this could sell for a good price if I donated it to the school to auction, right? Some part of you has to have respect for Finn, for the things he cared about. If you won't do this for me, then please, do this for his sake. Fine. 
Consider my hand forced. The school will officially trade you Finn's painting in exchange for all of those books. Thank you so much. I can't even express how much this means to me. What are you doing, girl? Sorry, I'm just a little overwhelmed. I wasn't expecting it to smell so strongly, like wood, dirt, and ash. Don't play games with me, child, unless you want me to take the painting back. No, I'm sorry, Schoolmaster. I've no more games, sir. You better have not. Now run along. I have enough students without potential as is, and I'm in new need of more. That's two of six, Finn. I can do this. We can do this. Even if it was emotional for you to sell off Finn's possessions, the whole point was to have you coming to his grave and focus on him less, Marlene. So where's the coins? How much did you make today? Uh, the thing about the coins was that... Did someone barter you down? That's not ideal. But as long as you set out to do what I told you, I'll still be content enough. So I did have the coins after I sold Finn's book. But on the way back through town, I saw that a charity drive was being carried out. The people there seemed to be struggling so much. They clearly needed the coin more than I did, and I thought that since it was money from Finn's belongings, he would have wanted me to keep it to charity. Not another word. I gave you a direct instruction on what to do. I told you the way that we would proceed and you immediately disobeyed me. Whether you like what I tell you to do or not is irrelevant. When I make decisions for your sake and I give you instructions, I expect you to follow them. What possible excuse could you have for this? That's what I thought. Now, even though you don't deserve it, I'm going to give you a second chance. Since you clearly place so little value on the importance of money, you'll go back into town and bring me back the same number of coins that you gave away after selling those books. I don't care what you have to do to get it. Get a job, or, or beg on the streets like the charity cases you gave our money away to in the first place. One way or another, you will learn the importance of coin. Until you can show it to me this time, you will not be allowed in my house. But I have no idea how to get coins. I don't know what I'm meant to do. But the way you're so good at coming up with stories about your brother, I thought you'd be creative enough to think of a solution. Good luck, Marlene. Learn from this. <sighs> What did I do to deserve such a disappointment of a daughter? You understand what's going to happen here, don't you? I'll be paraded around the town for a crowd of spectators before being killed for something that I never did and never was. Did I forget anything? You're forgetting burning for eternity in the afterlife. But I'm going to have to keep you waiting here a bit longer. Can't do something like this without the appropriate attire. I'm glad to see there's more to your job than just looking for innocent people to murder. Spit whatever clever insults you'd like, which I know how your kind act. I've seen you before. You're the ones who want to apprentice as witchfinders in training, aren't you? This'll be a good opportunity for the two of you to have your resolve tested against a genuine witch. Bring her with us to the HQ. I need to find the right cowl for the execution. 
Lesson 1. The right cowl can protect from curses. Are you sure, sir? I've never handled a witch in person before. If you don't have the courage to handle a restrained witch for a few minutes, how could you ever hope to become a fully-fledged witch-finder? Consider this a trial by fire. <laughs> He's getting a cowl to protect himself, but what protection do you have? Don't listen to her. A witch's mind games are just another trick in their magical arsenal. Come, bring her along. You'll both guard the door so that none of the villagers come in after her. If she dies by any hand other than mine, her curses may yet be in effect. Understood, sir. Don't try anything smart now. Sorry, folks. I can't let you come any closer for safety reasons. Why bother protecting her like this and making such a spectacle of it? You could let some of us inside right now. We could carry out the execution ourselves and be done with it for the day. You aren't even a real witch finder. You're just a child in training. Barely even that. In case you missed it, the witch finder himself gave me the orders to guard this door. Are you telling me that you have no faith in the decisions of the Witchfinder? Will you tell him that yourself? This is stupid. I... what am I even doing here? If they catch me, they'll call me Fae Touched and keep me away from the juniper tree. Or, or they'll think I'm a witch for talking to her and have me hung. There's still time to leave. Where did I put that blasted cowl?